guys, it's Sandy, and today I'm going to be working on Luke 9, and this is one of those places where Jesus was asking, who do you say I am? And people were given all kinds of answers, and he said, but what about you? Who do you say I am? And Peter answered, God's Messiah. And what I wanted to do was give my answer. I wanted to just put my answer in my Bible, and I thought about if Jesus was asking me a question, what if he texted me? Wouldn't that be amazing? So I traced my phone. <laughs> a piece of tracing paper and you can do the same with your phone there is a sketch in the description down below but make it your phone if you don't have an iPhone X you don't want to draw an iPhone X in your Bible but I literally laid it on my Bible and made a line around it and traced it and made that sketch afterwards so that um, I could trace the lines on the inside and know where all of those went and I cut out some of the complex things so if you have a row of icons or something just make it simple. You want enough of the image to just have the idea that it's a phone. And this would work for not just this passage in Luke 9, but it would work for a lot of others too. And I'm putting a piece of paper underneath so that I can have my pencil go off without going down the side of my Bible. These are uh, watercolor pencils. They're from Karen Dash. They're expensive ones, but you could do the same kind of effect. This is, there's no reason for getting these fancy ones, especially for something like this. I just wanted some black color around the outside edges, and then I'm gonna create the text window with some other colors. And like I said, this can go for all kinds of other passages where maybe God spoke to you about something, and he, he told you something, he asked you a question, and you had a conversation with him. This would be a really fun way to document that. And to just write down, what did he say? What did you say? Or if he was texting you and he asked you that, what would you say? Because sometimes I don't have an answer right away when he asks me something. I have to go and think about it. I'm like, I don't know. Never thought about that, Lord. So this would be a great way to kind of work that out in a conversation with him. And if you have questions for him, you could also start it out with your question and then leave a space there a little text block for him to answer and then when he gives you that answer go back later and put that answer in his text block which would be kind of fun so on my phone the person who texts me has a gray box and then when I say something it's in a bluish box and you could take a, a darkish blue color bl darkish enough that you can do white in it and that was originally my plan I was going to try to make it so that my text would be white because that's what it looks like on my phone. It didn't work out that way in the long run, but you can choose to do whatever colors you want. You could also make the phone any kind of crazy colors you want and have fun with it. It really depends on you and what you're trying to do with your page. But notice that I'm using watercolor pencils and I'm not being real careful about trying to make it all smooth and even because I'm going to apply water to it. And I'm doing it with my brush really just damp and I squished all the water out with my fingers or most of it so that I don't end up putting down too much. That's one of the problems with watercolor is that it makes your water, your paper all crinkly. Now my Bible in general, this is my Bible that I use all the time and it's generally crinkly as you can see across both pages. That's just going to happen as you work with pigments in your Bible and stuff. Don't stress out about it. It's not going to hurt anything to be a little bit crinkly. In between as I work from wet part and then I go to a dry part I often just iron it for a second and flatten it out a little bit so that it's easier to work with and sometimes even between layers of watercolor if I want to add another layer to darken something you can certainly iron that in between and there I had some black pigment on my brush so I just used a little bit bit of it for that top section which on my phone is got like almost a little hairline of gray so it separates it from the bottom section and there is some text and graphics up there that I am going to put in. But I took out the line of icons down at the bottom because I wanted to leave a big box. The big box is just for me to write my answer because in the verse, Peter just says, you're God's Messiah, boom, done. He would only need a little text box. But I wanted to be able to write a lot about what I, what I think or who I think Jesus is and who he is to me at this point in my life. And you could do this kind of a thing over time and see if it changes, see if, if you change your mind about exactly who he is to you. Now, as I was 
considering putting the journaling in this block in a darker color, I thought, let me get out my watercolors and make it a little bit darker and maybe my white pen will show up. It didn't actually work. It, I didn't get it dark enough and I didn't want to make it too dark. I wanted to make it kind of roughly the color that my my phone is. And there you go. The gray, my pencil didn't get dark enough, so I just added a little watercolor to it. You can use watercolor and watercolor pencil together, which I do a lot. So I went and ironed it and zoom in here a little bit so you can see some of the other details that I'm going to put in. There's a little arrow there to uh, navigate through the text program. And then I'm just going to draw in some of my lines here and there. I generally don't draw all the way across the text portion because if I put that black line in there, then that's when it starts becoming more unreadable. But through the pencil, I can easily see the, the words underneath and still read the rest of the passage. And then on my phone, it puts a little JC up there. It used to, before I had this phone, used to have a little picture of the person or write their name up there. You know, whatever, whatever your phone does, go ahead and put that in there. But remember that in 20 years, when you're looking back on this Bible, you may need to write, this was my phone at the time, <laughs> because you may not remember that's what a phone used to look like. Because I don't know what they're going to look like in, in 20 years. It could be completely different. So this could really date your Bible, which would be kind of funny. But I just wrote out who Jesus is to me now and who I was thinking of him as at the time that I was journaling this page. I could probably do 20 pages worth of this. My text message conversation with him could go on and on, but I'm just putting in a portion of, of it just so that I have something in there. So that's a really simple idea that I wanted to share before I get to my flip through for this week, which is week six. We are almost done. We have one more week until Easter. So happy Palm Sunday. And the first day this week was this verse from John, and it was about Jesus coming out of the water. So I put him in the form of a cross, since that's kind of where I'm thinking of things right now. I put the dove above, and then it talked about him being the Lamb of God, and that's who who the passage says he is. So I put the sheep down there as a reflection, and then the ripples indicating that his action really rippled out to the rest of the world and added the water drops from his baptism. This one was, okay, I included this because I made a mess. Um, the one word portion I had in my head as the other part of the math, but I accidentally put victory down before I started writing one word. Then I had to figure out how to fix it. So I took a piece of paper that I glued in there and I airbrushed a little bit of color on it. So whatever it takes to get some color that's the same paper as your same color as your Bible paper. Mine is a little bit off because my airbrushing wasn't perfect, but at least it's not glaring white <laughs> because that would look weird. Uh, the next day we were praying about the scripture where Jesus heals someone and the, the devotional talked about him being contagiously clean, that he could just come near a person and the, the person here, the leper, said, if you want to heal me, I can be healed. And just being near him, he was healed. Just boom. And I thought that was a beautiful thing to document. He's contagiously clean. And then the adulteress who was ready to be stoned and he was writing in the dirt. In this one, this was kind of a combination of some things in the devotional. Instead of saying go now and keep on sinning. He said, go now and leave your life of sin because you've met me and you've been saved by grace. Because the woman was not free to go back to her life of sin, but to celebrate that she was saved from her sin. So here's my finished page with my journaling on it. And then the last day was this one where his hour came and then he was glorified. And the parable he talks about the grain of wheat that has to fall into the earth and die before it will bear much fruit. So I had the dirt falling down the hourglass since his hour had come, but then he breaks through that. His seed that dies breaks through everything and, and grows things. So I put a little seedling coming from it. And that was probably one of my, my most fun pages of this week. And so I hope that you will join us for this last week over in the Facebook group. If you would like, you're welcome to do that. The link is in the description down below. There's more videos here on the screen. 
etc. And go have a blessed, blessed Holy Week because next week we get to celebrate Easter. So I'll put my video up on Saturday so you can have Easter without me, okay? Take care. I'll see you next week.